Welcome back, explorers, as we continue our tour on the bees in Oregon. In today's buzz, we will be covering where bees live, the four managed bees in Oregon, including the mason, leafcutter, and alkali bees, two food hero recipes that use ingredients produced with the help of these bees, and finally, I'm going to share what you can do to help bees. Follow me. So where exactly do bees live? Most of you might recognize this kind of nest up in a tree as a proper house for bees. But did you know this nest doesn't belong to a bee at all? This is actually a paper nest made by a wasp. A wasp is not a bee. If you do see this type of nest, keep your distance and let an adult know. We learned honeybees live together in a hive. Bees that live and work together like honeybees are called social bees. Bumblebees are also social bees. Most bees though don't live in a hive or with other bees. Instead, they're what we call solitary bees. Solitary means to be alone. Female solitary bees build their own nests. They do all the work, constructing the nest, collecting pollen and nectar, and laying eggs, all on their own. Bees make their nests in a lot of different places. In Oregon, most of our wild bees prefer to nest in small tunnels in the ground. These bees are called ground nesting bees. Some like to make their nests in old beetle holes or hollow plant stems, like the inside of a blackberry vine. These bees are often called stem nesting bees. Other bees like larger spaces, like a hollowed out tree. We call these bees cavity nesting bees. You can learn more about the life of solitary bees in the Explore the Bees of Oregon workbook. Find it on the Food Hero website. You may have seen a wild bee's nest when you were out in the woods hiking. It is natural to feel scared of bees because after all, we can sting. But bees usually only sting to protect themselves from natural enemies such as birds and other insects and animals that might want to eat them. When stings do happen, it's usually because a bee accidentally gets crushed or stepped on, or when people accidentally walk too close to a nest. If you see bees coming in and out of a hole in the ground or a hole in a tree, like this one, maintain at least 10 feet of distance. For over 9,000 years, humans have been collecting wild bee nests. From these nests, they would gather things like wax and honey. The bees in the nest would also help them pollinate their crops. Over time, people figured out how to raise some wild bee species in structures they built themselves. Bees raised this way are called managed bees. In Oregon, we have four types of managed bees. The honey bee, the mason bee, the leaf cutter bee, and the alkali bee. We met the honey bee last time, and while you probably remember they are the most important pollinators of agricultural crops, the three other managed bees are pretty important too. Let's get to know them a little better. That must mean it's time for Bees of the Day. Meet the Mason Bee. Mason bees belong to the genus Osmia. They are called Mason bees because they use mud or clay to build their nests. Managed Mason bees like to nest in small tubes or in blocks with many holes in them. They are small to medium-sized bees that come in brilliant metallic blues and greens, and sometimes black. They are pollinators of almonds, apples, blueberries, raspberries, and cherries, 
as well as many wild plants. In Oregon, they are most commonly used to pollinate cherries. And they are quick too. By the time a honeybee has pollinated one flower, a mason bee has pollinated three. Up next is my friend, the leafcutter bee. Leafcutter bees belong to the genus Megachylae. They are called leafcutter bees because they cut out small pieces of leaves to use to build their nests. Like the mason bee, managed leafcutter bees like to nest in small tubes or in blocks with many holes in them. Hundreds of blocks or tubes are usually stored together in a bee shelter that protects the nest from wind and rain. In Oregon, they are important pollinators of alfalfa grown for seed. Farmers buy the seed to grow alfalfa plants, which are fed to cows and other livestock that give us milk and meat. And finally, meet the alkali bee. The alkali bees of the Pacific Northwest region are the only ground nesting bees in the world managed by farmers. The bees are very picky they love salty, moist, crumbly soil. Farmers that live around the silty banks of rivers have built large, salty beds to encourage these bees to nest. Just like leaf cutting bees, alkali bees pollinate alfalfa flowers to make alfalfa seed. This seed is used to grow alfalfa hay, which is high in protein and enjoyed by many animals. Even chickens enjoy alfalfa hay. Thanks to the hard work of my friends, here are some Food Hero recipes you can try making at home using ingredients they help produce. Just remember to ask an adult for help and wash your hands for at least 20 seconds before you begin. The first recipe is the cherry crumble. Cherries bloom in early spring when the weather still can be cold and frosty. Mason bees do some of their best work pollinating cherry trees while most other bees are still asleep and insulated in their nests. Think of mason bees hard at work while you enjoy the gooey cherry oat crumble. The second recipe is the tasty hamburger skillet. We learned the leaf cutter and alkali bees help produce the alfalfa seed that many farmers and ranchers rely on because they depend on the nutrients of alfalfa hay like protein, fiber, vitamins, and minerals to produce meat and dairy products. Think about leaf cutter and alkali bees hard at work when you try the tasty hamburger skillet. Now that you know how important and fascinating bees are, here are some simple things you can do to help them. Leave sticks, twigs, and woody debris in your yard or garden to provide a place for bees to nest. Grow flowering plants that produce lots of pollen and nectar. Some of our favorite easy to grow garden bee plants are clover, sunflowers, thyme, and cilantro. Healthy flowering plants mean healthy bees. They will thank you by continuing to work hard to provide the yummy organ foods that we learned about together. To learn more on what you can do to help bees, be sure to check out foodhero.org slash bees. There you can also find the cherry crumble and tasty hamburger skillet recipes, as well as some fun activity sheets. Great job. You earned your last three stamps for learning about the mason, leaf cutter, and alkali bees. Your Oregon Bee Project tour is complete. I hope you enjoyed learning about the bees of Oregon with me. It's pretty amazing how bees help us grow and eat healthy food. The next time you see a bee, remember to thank them. Be on the lookout. I'm wondering how many different types of bees can you find where you live? Thanks for exploring with me.